Hello, this is Sophie Russell and you're joining me in a cup of tea on the second episode of the SR show and it is the 8th of October 2016. I, along with my cup of tea, I'm having Cadbury's dairy milk. I had a dream like this morning <laughs> um, about having some sort of special dairy milk um, chocolate thing it like, had a specific name but I couldn't find the specific name anywhere um, so I just went with the t typical dairy milk chocolate bar I can't open it with one hand ah oh, come on superpowers <laughs> I can't open it with one hand. Hold on a sec. <laughs> okay, I'm opening it. It's opening. Whoa. Break. There we go. Hey hey. Okay. Um. So yeah. Um. I did my first episode like, roughly about a week ago. And I quite liked it. I quite enjoyed it. Of course, I messed up because I did, um, like, the first time I tried it, <laughs> I accidentally um, deleted it. And I'd spoken for probably about 40 minutes, 40, 50 minutes. So, <laughs> reluctantly, uh, well, not sort of reluctantly, if I'd didn't really want to do it. I wouldn't have done, wouldn't have bothered. But um, yeah, I did the second bit, um, and yeah, I think it came out better actually than the first time. I managed to get to the point <laughs> rather than drone on. Um, but yeah, if you're new to this show, um, basically I'm just going to be talking about anything and everything. I'm going to be as candid and you know easy going as possible um chill just um this is why i'm just i'm letting you join me with my cup of tea and my chocolate and hopefully if you're listening to this you will um have brewed yourself a nice cup of tea or um, got a cup of coffee or a hot chocolate and some other um, side stuff that you like to have with your tea, coffee or hot chocolate. Um, and yeah, I just want you guys to get involved and to listen to the kind of things that I drone on about. Um, but of course you can feel free to say like what sort of topics you'd like me to bring up in future episodes. Um, if I don't hear any suggestions then I will just pick a topic and go from there. <laughs> it will be as random as possible. I mean last week I was talking about Harry Potter and I went on about um, how Harry Potter links in with spirituality um, like I discovered that oh, I discovered like in 2012 that chakras related um, like really really well 
really closely to the Horcruxes. And so yeah, if you want to find out a bit more about that, have your minds blown or opened even further, um, just check out that video. I will um, put the link up on this video. And uh, yeah, I was, I explained in the first episode that the reason I'm making a video in this fashion, like not showing myself um, and just showing pictures and stuff, like either uh, free domain pictures that I got off somewhere or um, like graphic design images that I'd created myself because um, I'm a graphic designer. Yeah, I decided to do it that this way rather than showing myself because I feel kind of weird. I don't tend to um, get my message across as well if I know that the camera is showing me like however I look. And I quite like to just be comfortable. I don't want to be constantly worrying about how people think um, I look kind of thing. I don't want people to be judging me by that. I like to just, you know, sit around in my pyjamas, t-shirt, and I don't like to put makeup on or anything. I don't bother with all of that, so that's part, part of the reason why I'm just like, okay, just audio, that's all we need. And so this is going to be like a typical, you know, classic podcast style sort of radio talk show. But I'm doing it on YouTube. It's going to be a YouTube um, podcast. Like a Ucast or something like that. That could be like a new saying. <laughs> um, so yeah, hang on. I'll just have a sip of tea. And then a bite of my dairy milk before we go on. Okay. So, in this episode, I'm going to go on from the Harry Potter topic and discuss something that um, I also discovered back in 2012 and I wrote down on Facebook. Okay. Um, this is getting a bit more uh, kind of religious territory, but... And I did <laughs> explain in the first video that I'm not going to be... I, I mean, I'm not a religious person, so you can't expect me to go deep into religion or anything like that. But... Um, yeah, I mean, I do, like, take on board all the stuff that's in the Bible, and I believe in it to a, like, point. I mean, I don't take it as seriously as some people might, um, but I do know, like, deep down that there's some kind of relevance about it just as like you know Christianity had a lot of relevance in the like years and years ago um, I think people have just lost um, they are not as into religion these days I mean it has a lot of issues surrounding it um, like in modern times, um, I believe that we can take things from religion and um, kind of incorporate it into what else we might have learnt like in recent years um, or what we may have picked up. Um, like, just kind of in a kind of new age way, you know, in your own 
um, sp spiritual um, space. So yeah, um, I'm going to be talking about the Deathly Hallows and their relevance to the Holy Trinity. Um, of course. Da da! It's not. It's not some big thing, really. Not to make too much bigger deal out of it, really. Um, in terms of religion, so. But um, yeah, if anyone is um, knowledgeable of what the Holy Trinity is about, um, Holy Trinity, um, as far as my knowledge goes, um, it's to do with three aspects of um, of our being and that is the mind, body and the spirit and one of the things that I noticed like following um, like my discovery of chakras being related to um, all the Horcruxes, um, I just kind of like started wondering, okay, what are the Deathly Hallows then? Because there's something quite mysterious about that. So I just wondered like, what kind of thing could they represent? And then just instantly I got, of course, the Holy Trinity. And then I, I kind of second guessed myself for a moment. I kind of thought, hang on a minute. Is it really the Holy Trinity? And then I went deeper into it. And then I was like, yes. Because each bit does, if you think about it the right way, represent um, each part of the Holy Trinity. And I believe that, I think, um, as far as I'm aware, um, Jesus talked about the Holy Trinity. He was the one who brought it up really and like in Harry Potter the the um, Deathly Hallows the symbol is almost seen as, seen as a kind of religious thing like a symbol of religion and the Holy Trinity in effect is like the symbol of Christianity <laughs> and so yeah if we go deeper into it um, so, my take on the mind aspect of the Holy Trinity, um, I feel that that represents the Elder Wand. Um, it's representative of the ego, and, you know, the mind is where um, our ego um, manifests most of the time um, and basically it's the easily corrupted third of the tr trinity um, you cannot we cannot focus on our mind alone to be one with life and all powerful and that is that pretty much sums up the elder wand as well you can you cannot focus on um, having a powerful wand um, alone in order to be a uh, master of death you need all three and then okay the next aspect is of course the body and I wonder if anyone can guess um, which um, deathly hallow um, that represents or represents to me anyway. Um, well, I put down that it is the resurrection stone. Um, it's representative of earthly attachment. Um, and if we grow too attached, we are never complete and grow sad and even resentful. No matter what, you will inevitably have to let go of your body to be truly happy. And yeah, so that's, I think, if you really think deeply into it, it definitely 
talks about the resurrection stone because you know if you go back to the story the tale of the three brothers um the brother who um used the resurrection stone to recall his loved one he grew sad and eventually wanted to kill himself in order to be rejoined with his loved one um, to detach himself from his body that was the only way he could be happy uh, so yeah and then we got the third aspect um, I th think I'm not sure whether there was any kind of um, discussion brought about by Jesus in the Bible or not, like to do with the fact that the spirit was the the best part of the three trinities. Um, um, but obviously like the spirit for me represents the invisibility cloak and um, it represents protection like divine protection. Um, we receive it tenfold only when we learn to channel ourselves through our spirit. We become, in a sense, invisible to our evil prey. And even if they attack, we cannot be harmed. Yeah, that is that pretty much sums up the invisibility cloak. <laughs> um, and... In my opinion, the spirit is definitely the um, like the le less easily corrupted. Well, it's it's not really corrupted. It's not easily corruptible at all. It's um, the strongest of the Holy Trinity um, because if we're focusing on our spirit, we are pretty much safe or keeping us ourselves safe from death um, we are learning to be invisible and um, yeah not making ourselves obvious to evil so not making ourselves easy targets so to speak um, whereas if we like we're focusing on our mind or our body, um, it's far easier for us to be corrupted um, through those aspects. Um, so yeah, this one was quite short and simple uh, compared to the chakra one. Um, I don't know much else to talk about um, in this episode. Um, perhaps we can go off on a little tangent. I'm not sure how long have we got to at the moment. Oh, it's only about 17 minutes. Um, but yeah, maybe if you want to, um, comment about the whole Deathly Hallows Holy Trinity thing, like, below, I welcome, like, all your, um, thoughts and um, beliefs um, um, it's definitely something that I couldn't ignore when I noticed it and it does make you think of Harry Potter in a whole different way but I think the Deathly Hallows being connected to the Holy Trinity it's still kind of like an um, uh, subject because even once you figure that out it's like okay so what does that mean what is that um so if we look like what kind of relevance does it have in the story um i don't think it I mean, I can't imagine, like I said in the first one, I can't imagine J.K. Rowling like deliberately set out to make it like the Holy Trinity, but you never know. <laughs> it's not something that's like really obvious. 
so I think it's just one of those things that turn up but it did definitely make me see Harry Potter in a whole different way and um, actually that year when I found it all out it took me on such a such an amazing journey of kind of it transformed me because I was going through quite a lot um previously um in that year and like I was trying to find a way to detach myself from um negative situations that were really impacting me like impacting my self esteem and I was growing stuck on this on a sorry on a creative project that I had been working on since I was about fourteen and a half. So like by two thousand twelve I was twenty one. Yeah. Just barely turning twenty one. And I was just getting really frustrated that I was getting um a block with this thing that I was doing um for a hell of a long time and I couldn't figure out like what was it that I was doing wrong I knew I was kind of being a bit perfectionist about it but at the same time I didn't know how to solve that I didn't know how to still myself um in the end I just kind of I started getting this um like recurring thought that maybe chakras were very important I heard of them like loosely um but I didn't really feel that compelled to um look them up until it was just made plain obvious that I was meant to and my sister happened to have a chakra book so I was like okay can I borrow that please and then I went through them and then I just kind of, kind of just put two and two together that the chakras were like Deathly Hallows and I was like, oh, I could go through each chakra. I don't have to like do like the typical meditation, like lotus position or anything like that. I can just kind of go through each one, focus on what um, that each point is, what they're trying to teach me. Um, and like over... A quite a long period of time uh, it's probably probably was about a few months I was um, going through each of the chakras and I kind of knew intuitively when I was ready to move on to the next one and by the time I went through them all the um, final part of the Harry Potter movie was going to come out and um, I just finished a really like gruelling college course like the first year of it and all of a sudden after going through all those chakras I just felt okay I'm going to try and knuckle down on this um, project and what would you what would you know but just that one time it just got let loose out of me it was like someone had like unblocked all the little like parts of me and it was all just like spilling out of me i was like oh my god what is going on is this is <laughs> so i could could hardly believe it i couldn't figure out why it was happening and then like a month later I was looking back I was like oh that's probably why <laughs> it was all the chakra work and so it definitely helped me um, just the fact that it related to Harry Potter it was just kind of my way of meditating through it because I like to watch films 
as a way, form of meditation and zen and just answering questions that I end up having in my mind and of course it gets me to sit still um, it's either films or it's listening to music um, otherwise I find it very hard to sit still and focus on being still uh, so yeah, it was a very, very clever way <laughs> of getting me to realise the importance of chakras and like how to balance mine without like taking it like as far as getting in the lotus position and <laughs> all that kind of things. Everyone has their own way of meditating. And I was actually discussing this with my sister the other day. Um, my sister actually pointed out that um, she like she too likes to watch films, DVDs as a way of meditating. And like everyone's way of meditation is very different. Some people have to actually be physically active in order to meditate like they have to go out and um you know like kind of be adrenaline junkies like that's their way of therapy and meditation and I thought wow that's actually quite an interesting thing um to bring up and then of course hearing my sister go on about that kind of helps me to um understand better like my way of meditation and to like thus communicate with uh communicate it with you guys on this show that I decided to do so I suppose um my sister bringing that up like just at the right time was um was something very like spiritual like in a way, it was kind of orchestrated. It was like someone was planting the bit of information. They was like, look, if you think about it this way, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I do feel that my life is guided um, by magic, pretty much. Um, whether you want to see that as whether you want to call it spirituality or not, it's up to you. It's your truth. Um, at the end of the day, um, I grew up in a family who, like the majority of my family, we like to research into um, spirits, like... My grandma was very interested in the spirit world and how they work. Um, I have a bit more of a loose uh, way of um, approaching it. Like I said, I'm not a very li religious person and I can't... And I can't imagine getting involved in spirituality to that extent in a way I've kind of st stepped back from the intense side of spirituality um, so yeah no need for anyone to be like ah no she's into spiritual she's into spirits and all that hoo-ha, there's no need to be like that, no need to like get all scared and stuff like that because I am pretty, I take all sides of belief, I'm like, I've been told that I'm actually quite um, half and half, like, I'm half rationa rationalist, half irrationalist, it's, it's very strange. It's like sometimes I can be very like 
earthly and kind of think of things in a very earthly way. Sometimes I can think in a very airy fairy kind of way. I feel that's kind of my personality. I'm very kind I'm all about balance and having a balanced viewpoint of things and not um Um, so yeah I'm getting a bit distracted at the moment <laughs> someone's like messaging me on my phone sorry about this sorry just like give me a couple secs <laughs> I almost forgot that I was um, recording myself for a moment there. Okay, hang on. I think it might be about time to wrap up. I'm sorry this isn't as long as the previous um, one. Mind you, we're short on about a few minutes, that's about it. Um, but yeah, I hope you hope you found this um, episode quite interesting. Um, the same with the first episode. I am going to be doing more of these, so stay tuned. And I'm not going to always talk about spirituality. It's just these first two episodes. I just thought I'd like mention about those things that I discovered in 2012 about Harry Potter and yeah and so in future episodes I don't quite know what the subject matters might be um it might take me uh, another week or so to come up with something but um if I don't do another video in the next week don't be alarmed it's just that I'm still trying to come up with inspiration or I'm waiting for the right inspiration to jump on me I may um, actually even do a review episode next like you know of my favorite films or type of films that would be quite interesting actually I think I've already just come up with an idea. <laughs> I think just looking at my massive collection and also thinking back to what I was just talking about, like films being my therapy, um, I could even go into like how they've helped me um, develop my... Um, like my way of thinking um, you know they've kind of like shown it, it's almost like looking in a looking glass um, seeing my reflection and just seeing what's going on in my life just watching um, a DVD and they just they give they give me messages they give me ideas on how to deal with certain things um, yeah so they can be good therapy in that sense but at the same time I've learned over the years not to take um, films and stuff too seriously of course I feel like in the media in general people need to be very responsible about what they put in films I think people don't understand how much of an impact um, the media does have on people like psychologically I don't think people understand psychology um, like enough I think they really need to uh, delve deeper about it in school I certainly would have found it interesting um,